the main really time trader dropped yesterday which was absolutely fantastic but there's so much to unpack within it you may have missed a few things so without further ado here are some things you might have missed number one tom fighting a fade now this was a scene i was extremely happy to see in the trailer yesterday and i'm sure it was one we would all hope would make the show now where exactly is this scene taking place well, to begin with, we know that things are playing out a little bit differently than they did in the Eye of the World. For example, Tom will not be in the two rivers from what we can tell, and of course that means he will not be subsequently travelling with them as they escape through there and go on their journey towards Shadow the Goth, Whitebridge, etc, etc. We presume and understand Tom will be first introduced in a town now called Breen's Spring. This news came courtesy of the interactive feature that was introduced on the Wheel of Time page on the Amazon Prime website or app. Now, one other thing to note, and this is quite interesting, for certain countries, when they translated it back into English, the town was actually called Berlon. So that's something to have a think about and what that possibly means. But for me personally, I would take that with a pinch, pinch of salt to a degree and just stick with the English version, which is of course Breen Spring. Now, obviously there's some unanswered questions pertaining to this scene. As we all know, Tom will not be accompanying, you know, random Matt when they get split up in Shad Goth and then obviously meeting Bail Damon or going on to Whitebridge. And so that leaves a few questions as to why Tom is having a you know fight scene with a fade if he's not there with Rand and Matt. It could just simply be that Matt and uh, Rand will you know subsequently meet Tom a little bit later in the first season in one of the later episodes and that would explain why Tom has the fight. But if it has nothing to do with the fact that Tom is protecting Rand and Matt as he does in the books that leaves a lot of question marks as to why this scene would be happening. Um, I'm trying to wrap my head around what those could be, but I'm having a little bit of a hard time coming up with something. Maybe you guys have an idea what this scene could be, you know, about. But it's most likely that it is. And just things are playing out slightly different from the way they did in the books. And Matt and Rand will meet Tom later on in the first season. Before we move any further, if you're new around here and like the content that I've been producing, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below because I can see a great many of you that do watch my videos aren't subscribed yet. So if you want to stay up to date on the latest Wheel of Time news, breakdowns, things you may have missed in these trailers, please subscribe. Number two, the sequence in Shadow the Goth. Now, this is quite hard to make out, but if you look towards the back of the pack that Lan is leading into Shadow the Goth, you'll notice that Moraine is slumped over and Perrin is very much having to hold her up in the saddle of his horse. Now, this, this is very interesting for obviously a couple of reasons. Number one is because this harkens back to a video I did maybe a day or two ago now, where I had a photo which came thanks to the interactive feature in the Wheel of Time page on the Amazon Prime, where we get a look at uh, Lan leading this very group in this very uh, same sequence and in order through a forest. And we see Moraine slumped over there in that photo as well. So this very much confirmed what I said in that video, that Moraine had been injured, or perhaps more to the point, she was exhausted thanks to all her efforts in keeping the Trollic Horde and subsequent Fade uh, from you know reaching and attacking and killing them. And now this is the sequence where they're going into Shadow the Goth to get away from that enemy and to try and recuperate in the night with Moraine and then leave. Number three, the Eye Eel. Now this is for two reasons I put this in the video. Number one is quite an obvious one and that is of course the confirmation of that caged IU in the first teaser trailer that we got a, a month or so ago. 
Uh, you can obviously clearly see the extreme similarities between the clothing that both of them are wearing. There's a very distinct different colouring for their uh, clothing that they wear. So we've you know, got very white clothing, the IE will do, that we've seen so far. And then there's a portion where it's a lot darker. And you can see the striking similarities between both the caged IE and the IE we see in this week's trailer. Now, of course, the second point is the more major one and you may and i'm sure you probably actually haven't but for the sake of this video let's talk about it of course this is an ie but the big question is just when is this ie and the scenes that are happening in this taking place is it in a current situation and state in time or is this a flashback because if you actually take a closer look at this scene with the ie they're moving towards a very distinct mountain aren't they and so that's got a lot of people thinking this is a flashback sequence from the uh, war that the IE had all the way before we even begin in the eye of the world and everything that comes with that, as we all know. But I'm not going to go into the details on that because I don't want to spoil anything for people that possibly might not have read the whole series and understand what we're talking about, which I'm sure a lot of you, without me having to say, know what I mean. That will be probably for a next video where I'm going to kind of discuss the um, unsolved mysteries from this first, from this main trailer. So look out for that. Number four, the yellow sister being burnt alive with Eamon Valder watching on. Now, this scene was absolutely shocking to watch. I did not expect to see anything of this sort in the show. Um, to begin with, who would have thought we'd see an Eris Sedai being burnt alive? And the fact we have Eamon Valder sitting at a table, eating and having a drink of what I presume to be wine while watching her burn alive. Notice also in that shot where you see Eamon Valder watching her, you can see in the reflection of his goblet her um, being burnt alive, which I thought was fantastic to see and was very shocking as well. And then towards the end, after he's, his smug look on his face, we get a shot of him and his, you know, bout region, where, if you notice, he has got a vast array of Aes Sedai rings, obviously from other um, sisters who he has killed. And obviously, after each killing, he takes their rings as a sort of trophy. Now, notice the fact of what he's doing with this particular ring that he's got right in his hand. He's putting on a yellow sister's ring. So that pretty much 100% confirms the fact that the shot very much prior to that of the yellow, yellow sister burning is this yellow sister's ring. And I thought this was shocking. Also note the blood stains on his hand as well. So this to me very much says one of two things. He doesn't give an absolute damn about having blood on his hands. He's very much done this for many a year, killing an heiress today, and very much has gotten to the point of being very good at it. And number two, and this is quite startling to think of, has he cut the finger on which this heiress today's ring was on? That is shocking to have a think about, to think he's probably got a knife, and cut her finger off to take the ring off of it. That is mind blowing to me. I, I think that's uh, very much a possibility that he could have been doing in this scene. So I think these white cloaks are going to be toned up like a hundred notches from the books. They're going to be extremely dangerous to the heiress today. And that's very much something I welcome for the show. Also, one other thing to note from this scene is the fact of how did he capture the Aeris Sedai? She can channel, she should be able to defend herself. Now, there's a few things that obviously come to mind here, and that is we have to mention uh, Fork Root. Now, as we know, if they were to introduce Fork Root this early on in the show, that would bring about some issues later on, and I'm sure you all know the scenes which I'm talking about here. And those are, of course, when um, Nynaeve and Elaine are captured after being dragged with Fork Root when they were unable to channel in, I believe it was Saladar. 
do not quote me on that, but off the top of my head, I believe it was Salada. Um, now, the issue with that is it that woman in that scene, she was the one that created and found that um, concoction which would enable um, the channelers not to be able to use the one power. And so if they introduce that this early on in season one, it may take away from that particular scenes later on in the show and how they are captured. So yeah, that's something to think about as well when it comes to this scene and how uh, Eamon Vald and the White Cloaks were able to capture this Air Sedai and all the other ones in the past that they have. Number five, Rand and Green in Faldara. Now, I don't particularly expect you not to have seen or you know, realised they were in Faldara, but more to the point of the fact that we have photos of the set for us all to look at. Now, this is another thing where this happened months and months ago. We got leaked photos thanks to a would-be passerby who happened to stumble upon this very set of this very scene that we see in the trailer of Rand, you know, practicing his bow and arrow in the courtyard. Now, we, I can remember very distinctly, we also got, you know, photos of Rand talking to a green from this um, passerby. And this is very much what happens in this scene. We get a shot of Rand using his bow and arrow. Then we get subsequently, a little bit later in the trailer, a couple of very quick brief uh, shots of Rand saying, I don't want to lose you. And then we get a still, then we get another one of a green mentioning that he will never lose out. Something along those lines. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool, interesting thing that I picked up on as well. And you may not have necessarily remembered and thought, and I thought I'll jog your memory on that. A green and Perrin's conversation at the end of the trailer. Now here, Perrin asks, do you think we'll ever go back? To which a green replies, home? No. Now, what is interesting about this is I'm pretty sure these scenes take place straight away after the events of Shadow Le Goff when they all get separated into three different groups. Now, if you cast your mind back maybe four or five months ago, possibly, there was a set that got leaked, which we knew both uh, Marcus and Madeline had filmed scenes for a green and Perinat. Now I'm going to put these photos up on the screen again just to, you know, recollect your memory. Now I'm pretty certain at the time we found out through the article that was written, I believe, or whatever it was, that these scenes were filmed during the night as we saw loads of the behind the scenes um, images of this particular set where we saw these huge uh, light operations or light operating machines to make sure they had enough light to film these scenes in. And so I am very certain that e that this scene here with Perrin and the Green is right after Shadow of the Goth and most likely just before they meet uh, Hopper for the first time, which I believe will happen after they've woken up the following day. I would say the way and the sequence this will be going in is they fall off into the river, they wake, well, yeah, they wake up after being unconscious for a little while, they find this particular place where the set is, they have their conversation with just seen, then the next day after they've woken up from their sleep and rest, they will then meet um, Hopper. But yeah, uh, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, hope you've all enjoyed it and you found something that you might not have noticed since you've been watching the trailers, I am sure on multiple occasions. Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed please leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new around here. Once again I'll catch you guys a little bit later in the week with more videos.